With just under two months before the premiere of The Book of Boba Fett and nearly 11 months after it was originally announced, we finally have the first trailer for the series. It's less than two minutes long, so there isn't a ton to go off of, but still, it's exciting to have something to look at. It opens with a Bomar monk in the desert, headed for Jabba's palace, or I guess I should say Boba Fett's palace now. And that first shot is kind of an odd choice to me. The monk's movements look a little off. I think they're going for a stop motion feel, which they did achieve. I'm just not sure I like it. But Molly loved it, so I might be alone in that. It kind of reminded me of seeing the first look at season one of The Mandalorian at Celebration 2019. The effects weren't completely polished and I was taken aback by that, and I was definitely overly focused on it because of course the series came out and everything looked great, all the elements worked well together, and any anxiety I felt wound up being completely misplaced. So let's just move on to Boba Fett suiting up and announcing that he is not a bounty hunter. That feels significant because of course that's how we're used to seeing the character, it's how we were introduced to him in The Empire Strikes Back, and most stories involving him are about bounty hunting. But he's moving beyond that and searching for something more. He's a crime lord now, or something. I'm not sure how he would refer to himself. Underworld ruler? With his return in The Mandalorian, there was a lot of speculation that maybe he was turning over a new leaf. He saved Finnick Shand, he helped save Grogu, and I'm still seeing that potential change hinted at in this trailer. Fett claims that Jabba ruled with fear, but he intends to rule with respect, which is interesting because that was exactly how Timothy Zahn wanted to set Grand Admiral Thrawn apart from Darth Vader and the Emperor when he first wrote the villain into the Star Wars galaxy, but I'll come back to Thrawn. Fett is saying all of this to an Athorian gangster, I assume, some other underworld ruler in a city that I think looks really cool, built inside and around a massive crater. It reminded me a lot of Jeddah. I think the locations were maybe my favorite part of the trailer. They looked great, and this is coming from someone who is constantly like, hey, can we go to a planet that's maybe not a desert of some kind more often? There's still sand everywhere, but the city's design still felt fresh and exciting. Who knows, it might be another city on on Tatooine. Maybe Jabba only ruled over one part of it. At one point, the Huts ruled the entire planet, but the War of the Bounty Hunters comic recently showed us that the entire Hut Council, except for Jabba, was wiped out just before Return of the Jedi. So Jabba's death leaves a pretty massive power vacuum in the galaxy, and explains why any surviving Huts may not have been equipped to take the planet or the palace back, and just left it for Bib Fortuna to grab. Anyway, the gangster also looks really cool. I'm digging the character design. I've already seen a lot of people asking if that's Doc Ondar and if we're going to see Batu. I would love to see Batu, but I don't think that's Ondar. This guy in the trailer dresses more extravagantly, and I don't see his little beard. But this is also 25 years before we can visit him in Galaxy's Edge. And Ondar does have ties to the criminal underworld. We know Crimson Dawn invited him to their parties in Solo. I would love to be proven wrong because I think Doc Ondar would be a fun connection, but I'm not expecting that to be the case. That Ithorian might not be long for the world anyway because their meeting looks like it comes to a tense standoff. It sounds like Fett is approaching other gangsters to try to get them to cooperate instead of compete with each other. We see him meeting with a couple Trandoshans, Klaatuinians, and Aqualish. And by the way, the dude at the end of the table dressed in purple and yellow robes, from a distance I thought he was a Feline and maybe a member of Black Sun. I was pretty bummed to see that he wasn't, because if that's Fett's goal, to unite the underworld, I would hope to actually see some known major factions instead of a bunch of new random faces. Black Sun keeps getting danced around in other stories, but it exists. We haven't seen them since the Clone Wars, and we can revisit the Pikes. What's left of the Huts is obviously relevant to the story. And yeah, having that Ithorian be Doc on Dar does make some sense. So I'm hoping the trailer is just showing us the randos for now, and the series will build to some more substantial appearances. There's a really fast shot of Tusken Raiders walking through a sandstorm. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is a flashback about how Fett survived the Sarlacc pit. And by the way, he is looking a lot better in this trailer than he did in The Mandalorian. Maybe he finally took a spa day and got some Bacta after five years. Maybe Jabba's palace has some great medical facilities right underneath the droid torture dungeon or something. I don't know. But back to the Tuscans, they look like they're wearing darker robes like the ones Fett wore in The Mandalorian. So maybe they come across this guy in the desert, near death, but obviously crawling out of a sarlacc. 
I could see them treating that like a big deal. A warrior who can survive a Sarlacc would be worth saving. They nurse him back to health, and he lives with them for five years for some reason. I hope we find that out. Maybe he was eventually like, you know what, I'm finally feeling pretty good. I'm gonna go ask that nice and handsome Sheriff Cobb Vanth for my armor back so I can unite the criminal underworld and make the galaxy a safer place. And right when he makes that decision, Din drives off with all of it. I say all that, but I don't know how noble Fett's intentions actually are. I'm honestly probably giving him far too much credit. I mean, he's still working with criminals. He's talking about how cooperation can make them all rich. That shot of a bunch of coins in his helmet was pretty striking, and crime bosses get rich off the exploitation of others. Jango Fett also instilled a major sense of legacy and reputation in his son, so maybe Boba is just trying to improve his status and make his father proud. Whether he's doing all this for riches or notoriety, they're both selfish reasons. As interesting as I think it would be to see Fett turning over a new leaf, there's nothing really in this trailer to suggest any major life changes. He's still got that rage and brutality we saw in The Mandalorian. Maybe this story is actually about the struggle of trying to be better in an environment that doesn't want to cooperate. It does seem like Boba and Finnick might be going around to crime boss after crime boss and offering an olive branch only for them to be like, nah, that's not how we do things. Whether we're talking about the Sith or the Empire or the scum and villainy faction, cooperation is not their thing. They're selfish. They look out for themselves first and foremost, and they stab each other in the back for more power or money or whatever it is that they value. So Fett's main task might be attempting to convince them all to change their ways. With words at first, but a gaffy stick to the face if need be. I do really like the idea of unifying the Underworld because it makes sense for the Grand Admiral Thrawn storyline that I assume most of our live-action Star Wars series are building towards. In the original Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn, he comes back to wage war against the New Republic, and he does very well. But one of the things he does not anticipate is a united front of smugglers coming in to fight against him at a key battle. They're united under a man named Talon Card in the books, and he helps lead the Smugglers' Alliance against the Imperial remnant. They're basically a bunch of Han Solos who had previously neglected to take sides in the battle between good and evil and decided it was time they did their part. So maybe we'll see something similar happening with the criminal underworld. I think Boba Fett has a much bigger challenge ahead of him if that's his goal because we're not talking about a bunch of Han Solos this time. These are not people with hearts of gold buried deep down. They're gonna resist any threat to their power and wealth, probably violently as the trailer shows us. I'm probably really grasping here because, again, the trailer is very short and doesn't reveal much. It's more of a teaser giving us some really great shots of new locations and characters. There's a definite sense of foreboding. I think we might get a lot of scenes like Mayfeld shooting that Imperial in the Mandalorians last season where the tension climbs and climbs until it finally breaks and everything falls apart. This definitely feels like it fits within the Mandalorian's aesthetic, and I'm sure it'll wind up connecting to that story more than the trailer lets on. I think there are still a ton of surprises to come. Most of these shots are probably from the first or second episodes, and I bet we'll get more to talk about and more plot details to discuss whenever the second trailer drops, probably in four to six weeks or so. Overall, I liked the trailer. I guess I wish there was one bombshell dropped, but that's just me being impatient. It'll be a lot more fun to experience those bombshells in the actual episodes next month. So let me know what you thought of the first trailer in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our Book of Boba Fett coverage, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page where we'll have even more Book of Boba Fett stuff when the series releases like audio commentaries and episode reactions. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.